Thank you for joining me again. Today we have a, another special unboxing. This is the Zostava ZPAP 90. So this is the 5.56 18-inch barrel rifle. And let's see what we've got. So this thing, I'm very excited about. I haven't got a chance to shoot it yet. I just got it. But um, the rifle itself looks pretty good. We'll take a more detailed look at that momentarily. We've got some paperwork that we don't care about. We've got a, looks like a, the third generation uh, ZPAP or uh, ZMAG, I think they call it. Um, the 556 magazine. It's got the steel reinforced feed lips. Um, we'll be testing that as well. It's got a three piece sectional cleaning rod. I haven't put that together, but it looks like it'll slot in under the barrel. And then some plastic uh, polymer Picatinny mounts for this Hogue grip, which is comfortable, but um, I don't know. I'm gonna definitely probably be getting some wood furniture for this thing, but let's, let's take a look at the way it comes out of the box. All right, so let's take a look at this thing a bit closer. So here we have the front end of this thing. Um, it's a 14 by one left hand uh, threaded muzzle nut. I'm probably gonna replace that with a flash hider. Uh, pretty standard looking front sight block. It does have the space and cutout for the cleaning rod. So I assume that it'll fit in here. Um, I'll put in a picture here if it does with the cleaning rod installed once I get that. Moving back to the gas block. Um, you can see that there's definitely not a bayonet lug here, um, which sucks, but because of the 18 inch barrel, you can actually see even on the M21, you can see that the bayonet lug was never gonna be able to be all the way back on the gas block like the regular M70. It actually would have to sit out here on the barrel. Um, so that's a, another project for another day. It's not surprising at all if they didn't include the bayonet lug, which they don't even own the M70s, but it would have to be a totally separate thing. So anyway, moving back to the adjustable gas block here. Um, looks like it's pretty simple to adjust. Um, just need to get in there, um, get a cartridge underneath there, and then you can move this piece here and adjust it. Um, we'll do some experimenting and play around with that when we get this thing out to the range. Um, the sling swivel looks like standard M70 style, Ugo style um, sling bar. Moving back, the Hogue furniture here, it does come with these little inserts that look like you can mount like Picatinny, I guess. These little polymer Picatinny pieces in right here on this grip, which I guess you could do for like a light or something. This is surprisingly comfortable polymer, like it's kind of, it's got a little bit of give to it, but I'm gonna leave it on there for now but I'm definitely gonna be changing it before too long. Moving back a little bit further, we've got the rear sight here, which is unfinished. It's the same sort of, the same sort of setup as the um, bolt carrier group. So that's interesting to note. Moving back, all the rivets look good. None of them look too crazy. None of them look very messed up or anything. They look pretty good. Um, as far as I can tell, they look good. And then of course on the other side, um, pretty good. Nothing to complain about. Um, it does have a Yugo side rail. I don't have a Yugo optics mount at this point, um, but we'll test that out <laughs> in the future. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing a magazine compatibility test video just fitting the magazines that I have because these have to be widened here in the States as opposed to um, the 85 series, ZPAP 85 series that I've been doing testing magazines. So we're going to be testing all those magazines. That video will be up here. So moving back, this trigger here, um, I believe this is one of the US parts. I know the furniture and the muzzle brake are. So let's take out this trigger real quick. So let's see, kind of typical AK trigger. It's got a little bit of this mushiness. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, pretty typical AK trigger. Um, feels very similar, honestly, to the other um, IZPAP pistols. So nothing to complain about, nothing to write home about. It's fine. Um, this Yugo, or this Magpul grip here, is definitely gonna be one of the first things I replace. Um, I don't have a problem with the Magpul furniture. I actually think the stock looks kind of neat, but the the grip, I just, it just feels wrong. <laughs> And Yugo AKs, I feel like, just need to have the Yugo grip. So I'm gonna be getting a surplus one of those to put on this. Um, we'll go ahead and knock out the, the stock here. So it's, it is an adjustable stock um, for length, and it also folds, although it is very kind of tight. Um, it does fold, and it locks in place with a detent back here. Um, and it's, 
it's relatively well in place. Like it's not gonna shake loose, but you don't, you don't have to press anything in order to deploy it. Um, there's no storage in here, which kind of sucks. Uh, but there are uh, accommodations for sling swivels. There's supposed to be accommodations for swing, sling swivels, but I guess that's an add-on feature. <laughs> um, I guess I could put one right here. Yeah, I could put one right here, which is suboptimal. I'll probably run it. I'll probably run that surplus sling, a surplus sling through here. So let's take a quick journey now into the guts of this rifle and take a look at it. So it's the typical Yugo pattern of the, uh, the little spring-loaded button release. So you have to press in this button right here, and then you can press in the um, the, the recoil lug, a recoil spring lug here that locks the dust cover. Um, so we've got a very standard looking inside. The only thing that is definitely different is this bolt carrier group. So you can see the front head of the piston is actually hollow. Um, and I'm sure that's part of the adjustable gas system. Um, it's also like really long, um, <laughs> which I, matches the 18 inch barrel, I suppose. Um, but it's pretty long, honestly. And let's see here. Got a pretty normal, yeah, totally normal looking AK bolt. Nothing looks strange about that, I don't think. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to get it out to the range, but um, everything that I've gotten, this is my third AK from Zostava, and everything that I've gotten so far has been top-notch, no complaints, so I expect this to similarly hold up and to be of a similar quality. But yeah, that's, uh, what's this rifle? We're definitely gonna get it out to the range. Um, we're definitely gonna have some fun with her, have a, uh, definitely have a range day with it and do some filming um, so stay, stay tuned for that but uh this is a good first look at this rifle i think there's a few other things i want to do with it but that's pretty much how she came out of the box um everything was there uh oh the only other thing i didn't look for and I, you're probably not going to be able to see it very well but deep down in there it does have a retaining plate right there um mine did come with the retaining plate installed Difficult to see, but uh, mine has all the bits and pieces. Uh, the retaining plate, um, pretty standard AK style trigger. <clears throat> Braided wire. Yeah. Pretty standard stuff right there. Nothing to complain about, nothing to write home about. All right. So, yeah, that's the ZPAP 90, pretty much as it comes. Um, it's going to be a fun gun. Um, like I said, stay tuned for some follow-up on it. We're going to be definitely doing a couple of interesting projects with it. It will continue to be a uh, mainstay on the channel, so stick around. All right, thanks for tuning in to this unboxing. Uh, hopefully you learned something. But yeah, that's the Zaspa Arms ZPAP 90 in all of its newly imported glory. So thank you. Thanks for tuning in.